Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you an other mini PC and this one by Mini and this is the Fanus Quieter DL series. This one has 16 gigabyte of RAM and 512 gigabyte of storage. Now I already have reviewed a few mini PC in the last few months including the one that powering my TV at the moment. And this one is the more powerful version of the mini PC. And this one, like the name suggests, quieter. Uh, this one is fanless. So there is no fan, which is kind of uh, cooling the CPU. The reason why I want this uh, mini PC to show you guys is that um, I'm going to run a home assistant um, server on this particular machine. So instead of using Windows like you will use for office stuff or play a bit of a leisurely game, I'm going to run Home Assist on this. Now Home Assist is something that can automate a lot of stuff in your home pie, um, which is enough to run Home Assist if you only want to run some command code and stuff like that. But eventually I will venture into CCTV uh, automation and actually use AI to read the feed of the CCTV and then announce in text on my phone what the camera see, that kind of thing. But this will be a um, learn as I go experience that I'm going to share it with you guys. If you are looking for a low power consumption PC, which is going to be on all the time, like a uh, home assistant server, uh, this might be the ticket because I think this one here running a home assistant most of the time most of the time will be less than like 10 watt in terms of power and I want to migrate my home um, solar power monitoring system um, onto the server as well. Um, you might have seen in my video um, previously that I actually monitor uh, my solar input and my battery power uh, consumption as such but hopefully I can move everything into one uh, central server. So that's enough of the introduction. So let's have a look and see what your money can buy. So this one here you can buy it on Amazon for £289. Um, will be around the same in dollars at the moment. I will put the link in the description if you guys are interested um, and buy it from the link. I do get a bit of money um, back. And just as a disclaimer, merely send this to me for free. So um, but they allow me to have free reign on how I will review these products. So on the box, it is a N100 CPU with 16 gigabyte of RAM, 512 gigabyte of M2 SSD storage, Intel UHD graphics, kind of a built-in graphics card. It does have a uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. In terms of video output, it can do one USB-C, 4K at 60 Hertz, one HDMI and one display port. So altogether you can actually run three display on from this machine. So first of all, you got your information leaflet or like a quick starter guide. And then you got your mini PC. Now, like I say, this is a mini PC and this is like graphics card, CPU, you name it, everything on one little device, which is on the palm of your hand. Um, this kind of mini PC is not new. A lot of people use this kind of uh, device as a uh, display for the shops. So this one can actually mount behind the kind of a big TV and then just run um, the advertisement or PowerPoint or whatever you want to show on the screen. Very funny texture on this one here. It's very rough texture on it. And then on the back, you got all the ports here and you got your USB-C port, you got your headphone jet, you got your SD card slot. HDMI, uh, display port, Ethernet, Ethernet, and your 12 volt input in the form of USB C. On the side here, you got three USB A port. You got your Kingston lock slot, and this side is blank. So there is no fan on this um, mini PC. So I guess the whole case is actually the um, heat sink. And that's, I guess that's why they got a texture surface here to increase the surface area as well as radiate a lot more heat. And the second layer in there, you got a little metal bracket for you to mount it behind a tally. You got your power brick and the power brick, you can attach a three pin plug, which is good because we are in the UK. Yours will be different if you are in a different country. And the power brick um, output is 12 volt, three amp. So this is 36 watt. So even the maximum power um, the supply can deliver is 36 watt. So it is going to be a low power consumption device, which for me is good because I do monitor every single watt of my energy output. So the less 
So the less they use electricity, the better, especially I'm going to leave it on 24 seven as a server. But I think what I will do is I will run the machine on Windows just to show you guys. They sent it to me for free. They didn't ask me to do anything to it. They just asked me to showcase it. But I thought it would be wrong if I just showcase the home assistant side of this machine. Besides this, it shouldn't take long anyway. So um, let's do that. So I have my keyboard here which I'm going to plug into the side of this one here and then mouse go into the side as well yep power supply go into the 12 volt logo at the back ethernet cable go into one of this slot right here and the HDMI out into this slot right here <coughs> and that's it Cable is not very long, so I have to leave them here. And then I got the power brick, which I'm going to plug into this device here, which will monitor how much power draw at the moment is on zero. And the design is so sweet that I can't. Anyway, so that's fine. So that's it. You plug everything in, press the power button and you should See the machine boot up. Yep, that's it, powering up. So now it's running at 10 watt. So it's a really low power consumption device. So the very familiar Windows software. So I am um, just going to quickly set it up so you guys can see that it's running on Windows. America, yeah, go on then. And while this is doing the update, I want to show you the size comparison. So this one here is the Mini Overclock X5. It does have a fan built in and it's a lot more powerful. And then you can see the size different. Slightly bigger, it's not that much bigger. Mini PC is still really, really small. Okay, so now we boot up into Windows. So Windows is now up to date. If I look at the system menu, Quieter DL is the name of the machine. Uh, display, I'm only running 1080p because that's my um, th this is my old te uh, television. Um, storage space, I got 426 gigabytes. Let me see what else can I tell you from here about, I guess. So the processor is N100 and running at 800 megahertz. Uh, install RAM is 16 gigabyte and then and this is running on a Windows 11 Pro version 23H2. I'm about to destroy it all because I'm going to load the Home Assistant program onto the uh, machine. I don't experience any slowdown or anything like that. Everything works. With the software CPU Z, um, I can see that is Alder Lake and maximum TDP is only six volts. So like I say, this is a very low uh, voltage consumption at the moment, yeah, even though I'm using Windows, it's running at about five or six watt. Um, N100 is the Intel chipset. So when you stress the CPU, it will run the core speed at 3.3 gigahertz. It depends on what power you need. It will scale up and down and try to be efficient, I guess. But, but that's it. We have to say bye bye to Windows now. We're going to install something else on it. So now what we will do is we will we put the um, PC and then we go into BIOS and then maybe we can change the boot sequence into booting from a USB drive. Actually, I don't need to worry about all this update rubbish now. So I'm just going to force it to turn off. If it doesn't, I'm just going to plug, unplug the machine. So USB into the last USB port. And before I boot into Windows, I have to press delete key repeatedly. There we go. So BIOS screen. So what we need to do is we need to change a couple of things here. So we need to change the boot up system. Uh, chipset. Security boot drive. Um, let me see. Set up boot quiet boot boot priority. So we don't want to boot from option one. Uh, 
All right, so this is the instruction. Try or install Ubuntu. Hey there, friends, it's Benson here. Bringing the goods so crystal clear. Unboxing magic straight from Amazon. Amazon. Testing them out, I'm never one to abandon. So now that Home Assistant is installed, um, now we can use another computer to log on to the Home Assistant screen to finish um, configure the program. Um, basically, this is running a server. I'm using the um, browser to log on to that. So I'm now going to create my smart home. I need to register a user account. Yes, and then I am on Home Assist. If I can do it, I guess anyone can do it if you follow the instruction. So basically you need a um, OS, which is the Ubuntu, um, to load up the machine and then you have to f flash the firmware onto it and then you run it at the background. So now this one is running Home Assist. It's doing nothing at the moment and it's idling at 4.6 volt. And I can configure uh, the Home Assist from anywhere um, with internet access. So now I can start to play around with this and I'm gonna set it up. And I need to do some research and set it up properly. And then I can show you what the end result is. So with the power of editing, it has been two days since I set up the uh, mini tiny uh, computer here. And it has been running um, non-stop here for the last two days. And idle, they are usually around, actually, let me pick up the camera. And from idling, they are usually, usually running at about five volt. So hardly use any power at all. And this is the reason why I want to use this particular model instead of buying a uh, small Pi. So I got Home Assist running now. It took me around to figure it out because like I have to learn everything myself. I have the power meter here, which I can monitor my solar power and my um, batteries. And then you got a bit more like um, speed of my router. In the middle, you can see I got two um, CCTV camera feed, which is 24 hour, 24 seven feeding this machine here, as well as my NVR. And then on here, on this side is where the automation comes into place. Now I already have a lot of sockets and light, which is uh, wireless. For example, if I do this, and you can see all my lighting's on off. Let me switch it back on. And uh, my compressor is on there, exhaust fan, a lot of the things which uh, Alexa usually do uh, automation, I can do it on this. Now this is Surface Pro and is running the Home Assist front by using the website. So this is not a software. This is just a web browser, which is connected to the mini silent mini PC, which is quite cool. So with my television is running my bigger PC. So I do use this a lot now. Um, tiny PC, I can't afford to have a big PC here. So that one is the i5 version and runs a lot of stuff off my telly. My telly is 1080p. Again, this is just a website. Same function, obviously I can't touch it now, but you can use a mouse to do that. And with the same server, just to show you how um, diverse is it so I can access it on my phone but unfortunately until I pay for cloud service I can only access all these uh, locally so this is my CCTV camera you can see my front of the house in real time which is quite cool and every single device on my network become a home assistant display and I can have different kind of display I don't I don't have to have like one static one if I want different information I can go with different one but this is what I've been doing for the last two days trying to learn everything from scratch 
it's not difficult, but it does take some time to set up. Now, a lot of you may think that, oh, why would you? Oh, that's my wife. A lot of the, a lot of you will ask, like, oh, what's the reason for um, having a home assist if you already have a monitoring system from your inverter? You already have a system on Aro, which is a different um, CCTV. But it's to have everything at your fingertip. I mean, automation, CCTV, power monitor. There is a lot more this can do. I mean, it's running out of space, but I can like, you know, have another page of different things that I want <clears throat> using this as a photo frame, a media player, you name it, you can do it. But I'm not gonna lie, I do think I'm a bit out of my depth in terms of like programming and stuff like that. So I have to say big thank you for a lot of the other YouTuber, which I watch a lot of the video. In the last two days, I don't have much sleep because a lot of the time was figuring out how to get this set up so I can finish my video before my big uh, Asia trip coming. Trying, I think integrate is the word and try to integrate different API, which is like, you know, data feed into Home Assist. That is the hard part. In a way, I think, you know, it's easier if you've never done this before, if you never have any automation in the house, you just buy everything in one go and buy what you need. Then I think it will be a lot easier rather than trying to figure out how Arrow will allow me to integrate their video feed to, um, to Home Assist and then Solus um, Inverter, how to get their data feed into the system. And then I got Emon Pi as well, which is a home power monitoring system. So all these different ecosystem have to all come together and fit all into this tiny PC. As I say at the beginning of the video, obviously this is sent to me for free to review, but I'm so glad that they sent this to me because I always wanted something which has no fan, um, silent, and be able to run a home server now, because um, most of the time the automation don't really use a lot of processing power, so a Raspberry Pi is more than enough to run um, the software. But when it comes to dealing with a lot of data, for example, this is not where it's going to end. This is just the beginning. I merely just scratched the surface of Home Assist. So the next stage for me is to get more camera feed on there. And then there's another few ecosystem. As you can see on my channel, I have done Arrow system. This is one of the best one that I have ever get for review. And I got six cameras on this particular ecosystem. And I also got a, lot, a few other uh, fantastic CCTV, which have their own little system. So I need to bring that into the equation as well in terms of building my own home server. So that will be one thing. And the next step after that, I don't know I will ever be able to do that. If I'm clever enough to figure it out is that some users already reported that they can use AI to monitor all the camera feed. And then if they see something like a motion detection, rather than just pop up on the screen to show you what is on the screen, they can actually use AI to analyze the photo and send a text message to your watch. That will be ideal for me because I have no time to actually um, pick up my phone and have a look at the feed when something happens. I rather this the AI just tell me that, oh, someone lingering outside the door with a delivery van with a parcel in the hand, most likely is a delivery driver, please check. In that case, I can just like open the camera and say, look, please put it in the box or I just leave them to do what they need to do. But if it is someone like, you know, a two dodgy guy outside your house holding a gun, that's a different matter. But that's all I've got time for you today. Um, mini PC at 5 volt. Um, this actually used less energy than one of my energy saving LED bulb in my kitchen. So thank you very much for watching. You might be watching this video because you're looking for a mini PC or you might be looking to start your home assist journey. Hope you find my information useful. Don't forget to share, like and subscribe to my channel. I'm so close to 10k. That will be fantastic. So I can't wait to see you next time with more interesting gadgets. Bye bye. He's carving his place with passion and heart. He's setting the pace. Benson's on a mission, rising to the top. Building his channel, he'll never stop.